no discussion, will the clerk please call the roll? 14 ayes. Motion passes. Next we'll go on to the public forum. Yes, this evening we have Diane, and forgive me if I pronounce it wrong, is it Will Sinski? Okay, Diane, could you come on up to the front? You can't hear. And Diane, you might want to pull the mic down just a little. And can I have your home address, please? 1013 North 5th Street. Okay, and you will have five minutes. Okay, I won't need five minutes. Good evening. I'm here tonight to speak in favor of the Mayor's Neighborhood Leadership Cabinet. As a current president of Sheboygan Neighborhood Pride, our Board of Directors has discussed the proposal and we support moving forward with it. This proposal is going to complement and enhance the work that SNP has already started. This proposal will also clarify the city's support of the recognized neighborhoods. I live in one of those neighborhoods, which is Ellis Historic Neighborhood. And this cabinet will ensure the flow of information between the city and the neighborhoods. Along with SNP, the cabinet will hopefully encourage more neighborhoods to become fully recognized. The purposes of the cabinet should make neighborhoods more willing to take pride in where they live and more ownership in their areas. The collaboration between the Leadership Council and the SNP will help in empowering community members and building relationships for a stronger Sheboygan. Thank you. Thank you. Next on our list is Danielle Cook. Is Danielle here? Okay. And next would be John Webster. Thanks for having me. Hi, John. Can I have your home address, please? 3425 North 8th Street. 3425 North 8th. Yeah. And you will have five minutes, sir. Don't need it. Thanks. <laughs> okay. uh, good evening and happy <laughs> Passover. Um, I'd like to thank the Finance Committee for following the state environmental laws with regards to wetlands. Um, it, uh, it was very helpful. It reduced my special <coughs> assessment from $40,000 to about $15,000. Uh, that's still a lot of money, but I'm thankful to have the 35 or the 30 uh, that I was gonna be missing. This said, the city needs to discontinue using the police power special assessments. They take equity from its citizens, your constituents, including retirees, including small business owners, unemployed people, single mothers, and young families trying to make ends meet. We are not a tax-paying body. We are a tax-paying body, not a payday loan store, which is essentially what you've done to us in this last round. In the case of Eisner Avenue, you used our money combined with an overinflated bond, okay, to create a slush fund, okay, of freed up future taxes. This will essentially wind up double, as a double taxation for the property owners with no benefit for the Eisner Avenue residents. We will pay the special assessment now, then we'll pay off the bond later with interest. Do you get it? That's essentially what you've done here, uh, whether it was intentional or not, and I don't want to speak to that. I stood at this podium a year ago and I told you that this was wrong, but you went ahead and did it anyway. And it's still wrong, and it, 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 it really it, now it's really wrong because of the way it turned out. Um, the state power of police police power assessments speaks of unique benefit to properties being assessed and reasonable taxation. Taking the excess funds from this project and using them for marina repairs does not uniquely benefit these properties. Okay, whether we can pay for it or not, you're taking money from over here and putting it there and it has nothing to do with our unique properties being benefited, okay? And that's the way the law reads. I think some of you know that. Excess funds should be put towards for current or future road projects or returned to the citizens, okay? Not being used to fix a hole over here or a hole over there. I challenge Sheboygan's leaders to do the right thing when, fun when funding future projects. Just because you can do something does not make it right I think we all know that. Police power assessment is a, is a legal power, but it is unjust and it needs to stop. 
Thank you, and have a nice evening. Thanks, John. Next is Ann Rodewall. Ann, if you could come up, please. <coughs> Ann, can I have your home address? Sure. Uh, my name is Antoinette Rodewald, 3608 High Cliff Court, Sheboygan. And you okay. will have five minutes. Okay. I have a question of just helping me refresh the memory of this entire pro project of the Eisner Avenue. Um, and I expect this to be a, some kind of a dialogue. What was the total amount allocated for the project? Anybody have any idea? Ma'am, you just have the opportunity to make statements. There's not going to be a dialogue in, in this particular setting in our council. Sorry. Oh, okay. No problem. Okay. So then my question was, then, after we have the total amount allocated, then my next follow-up query would have been, how was the formula created for assessing the homeowners that live on the street but drive no more on the street than anyone? Uh, thirdly, I wonder how it was determined how much the town of Sheboygan paid for their people. And then what was the total amount spent versus the amount of allocated? Now then, how was it determined that $350,000 was extra? Or is there a lot more surplus in this project? You know, like if the ice damage had been $500,000, would the Common Council have approved, ah, let's take $500,000 from that account? And those are some of my questions that I need to be answered. Now, as a citizen, how would I go about finding those answers? If you want to give me a call during business hours tomorrow, we'll work with you. And business hours are? From 8 to 5. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And lastly, I have Dawn Zire. Is Dawn here? She is not. And we're all set. Okay, under the mayor's announcements, uh, I'd like to start out with a proclamation. Is Jessica Burke here? Jessica, you want to come forward, please? This proclamation uh, uh, supports osteogenesis imperfecta. OI is a genetic disorder characterized by fragile bones that break easily and is known as the brittle bone disease. A person is born with this disorder and is affected throughout his or her lifetime. And whereas there are different types of OI with a range of severity from mild to life-threatening, and whereas because there is no cure for OI, treatment focuses on minimizing fractures, the surgical correction of deformity, reducing bone fragility, maximizing mobility, independence, and function. Whereas increasing, increased funding and education and research is needed to help fund more effective treatments, and whereas osteo Genesis Imperfecta Foundation is declaring May 10th through May 13th of 2014 to be National Osteogenesis Imperfecta Awareness Week. Board members, staff, and medical professionals and volunteers are joining together to focus their attention on OI in an effort to increase awareness. I'm Mike Vandersteen, Mayor of Sheboygan, who hereby proclaim May 3rd through 10th of 2014 as National OI Awareness Week. And I'll present this to Jessica, whose daughter is afflicted with this disease. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Next, I'd like to make a couple of special awards to uh, some aldermen that are going to be leaving us. Uh, tonight's their last meeting. First of all, I'd like to rent, recognize Alderman Joel Pentacle. Joel, you want to come forward? I have a certificate for you. Joel was appointed. In June 17th of 2013, he was serving on the Public Works Committee. And Joel, we appreciate your 10 months of dedicated service as an alderman to the city of Sheboygan. And thank you very much. <laughs> Next is Alderman Scott Lewandowski. Scott was elected on April 3rd of uh, 2012. He served on the Law and Licensing Committee, the Architectural Review Committee, and Historic Preservation and Housing Rehabilitation Loan Committee. And Scott uh, Lewandowski, the Certificate of Appreciation is recognition for your two years of dedication to the City of Sheboygan as an alderman. Thank you, Scott.
And last is Alderman Scott Versi. Scott was elected on April 5th of 2011. He served on the Public Protection and Safety Committee, the Law and Licensing Committee, Salary and Grievances Committee, Public Works, and also on Capital Improvements, City Planning Commission, Risk Management, Group Health and Insurance Committee, uh, also the Sustainable Task Force, and the Atar Architectural Review Board. Scott, please come forward. <coughs> This certificate is an appreciation and recognition of your four years of dedicated service to the city of Sheboygan as an alderman. Thank you very much, Scott. Thanks, Scott. Next, we'll move on the consent agenda that includes items 2.1 through 2.46. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and file all ROs, accept and adopt all reports of committee, and put all resolutions and ordinances upon their passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Those documents are before us. Alderman Donahue. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I'd like uh, item 2.43 pulled, please. 2.43? Yes. Okay, 2.43 is before us at this time. Any motions? Um, just uh, by way of explanation, uh, this relates to the matter that uh, Mr. Webster uh, and Ms. Uh, Roderwald were talking uh, with us about tonight. And the only point that I'm making by pulling this from the consent agenda is what I consider the continued unfairness of special assessments for road work. Now, the particular project, as I understand from Mr. Amodio, was about $5 million. <coughs> it was a state-driven project. The city did uh, provide very substantial funding in the range of about $2.5 million or in that, in that general vicinity. Property owners along the road were assessed uh, more than $800,000 toward the cost of that. Now, there were some cost underruns, which is always good news, and it is my understanding that the special assessments against the property owners were accordingly reduced by the amount of the uh, underage. So in that respect, justice, I think, has been done. I do t take serious issue with Mr. Webster's characterization of this loan as a slush fund for the city. Nonetheless, property owners along that route, and if you looked at your document under 2.43, many of them were assessed in the range of about $1,500. Mr. Webster's property and a couple of other properties were, uh, were assessed in, in, in a much larger amount, in the, in the range of twenty-five dollars to $30,000. Now, here's the problem with road assessments, in my opinion. The Websters and Ms. Rodewald, I'm sure, use Eisner Avenue and North 8th Street. I use it too, and I expect that many of us on this council use that road, more or less, depending on where we live and the nature of our business and so forth. While I can see the property owners should be specially assessed for sidewalks and trees and things like that, those are things that we buy insurance for to make sure that people don't get injured. We take personal care of it, we shovel it, and so on and so forth. Roads are really for the people and they're for all the people. And it's not fair to assess what can be in some instances just by virtue of how many feet you have along the road. Not how rich you are, not how much your house costs, nothing but just how many feet that you have can be a serious financial hardship. Now, people, if you're asked to pay $25,000, most of us can't afford that, so it's assessed over a period of 10 years, but then there's interest that has to be paid. So, all I am saying is that at some point or another, we should look at the special assessment process for roads and see if we can do it in a way that's fairer and more equitable for all the citizens. If you have, instead of 15 property owners sharing that $800,000 burden, you have 50,000 people in the city sharing it. It just, to me, makes a whole lot more sense and is more equitable. Thank you. With that in mind, and I don't know if this is appropriate, I would move to accept and adopt 2.43. Second. Moved and seconded to accept and adopt uh, 2.43. Does clerk call the roll? Fourteen eyes. Motion passes. Uh, on the consent agenda, one other note is 2.14. Uh, rather than to accept and adopt, will be referred to the Finance uh, Committee of the new council. The rest of those documents are before us. Is there any other discussion?
see none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? <coughs> 14 ayes. Motion passes. <coughs> Next, we'll go on to reports of officers. Items uh, 3.1 through 3.8 will be referred to various committees of the new council. Under resolutions, item 4.1 is a resolution by Alderman Hammond, Carlson, Bellinger, and Heidemann authorizing the transfer of appropriations in the 2014 budget to establish an appropriation for the purchase and demolition of, of 1022 Erie Avenue appropriation for the Avenue appropriation for Mead Library projects funded by their foundation. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd uh, move to suspend the rules. Second. Thank you for that motion. All, eyes. all in favor of suspension, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Under suspension, Alderman Hammond. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. I move to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Fourteen ayes. Motion passes. Item 4.2 is resolution by Alderman, Alderperson Hammond approving the terms and conditions of the contract for uh, lease of land and accompanying ground lease between the Redevelopment Authority and Dan Welsh doing business as Dumper Dance Charters. Alderman Hammond. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. Due to the timing and uh, the particular, uh, Mr. Welsh would like to start construction. I'd move to suspend the rules. Second. All in favor of suspension, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Under suspension, Alderman Hammond. Thank you again. Uh, I'll move to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Thirteen ayes, one abstention. Motion passes. We'll go on to reports of committees. 5.1 is an RC by law and licensing pursuant to RO 313 of 1314 submitting a taxicab driver's license number 0306 uh, be denied based upon her failure to accurately reveal all relevant convictions on her application and her failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion under discussion. Is Heather Masterson here this evening? She's not here. Um, our committee invited her to attend our meeting on two different occasions, and she did not appear either time. Is there any other discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? 14 ayes. Motion passes. Items 5.2 through 5.8 will be referred again to various <coughs> committees of the new council. Under matters laid over, we got other matters first. Uh, city Attorney. 6.1 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2014 and June 30, 2015. That'll be referred to the Law and Licensing Committee. 6.2 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting a communication from George Harris requesting a waiver from the sex offender residency restrictions in order to live at 1823 North 10th Street. That'll be referred to Public Protection and Safety Committee. 6.3 is a resolution authorizing advertising for bids for the 2014 street concrete panel replacement program for various streets throughout the city of Sheboygan. That will be referred to public works of the new council. 6.4 is the resolution authorizing advertising for bids for the 2014 street crack ceiling program for various streets throughout the city of Sheboygan. That will be referred to the public works committee of the new council. 6.5 is a resolution authorizing the purchasing agent to enter into contract for the annual root control program for the control of tree roots in the city sewer network. That will be referred to the Public Works Committee of the new council. 6.6 .6 is an RO by the uh, chief of the police uh, submitting a quarterly report showing the activities of his department for the period January 1 through uh, March 31, 2014. That will be referred to the Public Protection and Safety Committee of the new council. Now, 
we'll go on to matters laid over. Item 7.1 is resolution number 162 of 1314 by Alderman Hammond authorizing moving various city uh, of Sheboygan wards to new polling places for all future elections. Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. We have a motion in support to put the resolution upon its passage. Alderman Bourne. I'll make a motion to put the uh, resolution upon its passage. Done. Pardon? Already done. The motion's on the floor. Is there any further discussion? Alderman Bourne. No. No. Oh, no, Alderman. that was, I'm sorry, that was from before. Okay. Alderman Lewandowski. Well, it's taken care of. All right, if there's no other discussion, will the clerk please call Mike, the roll? There's a light. I'm so Alderman Lewandowski. I was just wondering how many of these voting pool places meet handicapped accessible requirements because I know of two of the new polls areas that do not meet and where I voted a couple weeks ago did not meet two of the requirements for the ADA standards. Do you have any answers? Sure. Um, we're required by law to have um, what we do is send out one of the engineers and they do a survey and send it into the state. So we have surveyed and we always have all of our locations. So we have surveyed. If there's something that you need to let me know, just contact me tomorrow. But yeah, that's, that's protocol for having polling locations. So just give me a call tomorrow if you have an issue. Is there any other discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? <clears throat> 13 ayes, one no. Motion passes. <clears throat> we'll go on to 7.2, resolution number 162 of 1314 by Alderman Hammond, recommending amending the document relating to the fiscal year 2014 one year annual action plan for the community development block grant program submission. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. The resolution is before you. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Fourteen ayes. Motion passes. Item 7.3 is general ordinance number 60 of 1314 by Alderman Donahue, Boren, Vanderweel, and Dassler reestablishing the salary schedule for a certain designated uh, elected officials. Alderman Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I would uh, move to put the ordinance upon its passage. Second. It has been moved and supported. Uh, the motion is before us. Is there any discussion on the motion? Alderman Boren. <coughs> Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I don't have any issue with the uh, proposed salaries. However, down on number six where it says health insurance, health insurance premium contribution will be consistent with non-represented employees. Uh, I did a little research and back in uh, 2013, there was an attempt to uh, change the, uh, the mayor's health insurance premium uh, from eight, the 18% that the, the council did back in 2012, and that, that failed on a nine to four vote back in uh, May of 2013. This originally started out back, uh, back in uh, March of 2012 on a document that was brought forward by uh, Alderman Carlson, Boren, and Hammond, and that was establishing the new salary for the mayor, and then it was referred to the Committee of the Whole, and the Committee of the Whole uh, voted 11 to 3 uh, to make the, the health insurance contribution for the mayor for, to 18%. I guess what I would like to see with this document tonight, as I said, I have no problem with the salaries, but I think all elected officials should be contributing the same amount to the health insurance, otherwise it's inconsistent. Uh, so I would make a motion to make the health insurance contribution uh, at 18%, which is consistent with the other elected officials. Thank you for that amendment. Is there any, is there a second? Mo, mo, we have a, a second on that. So that amendment for a change in the uh, percentage for health insurance is before us for discussion. Any further discussion on that? Alderman Donahue. Um, thank you, Mayor. Um, 
We uh, did have a lively discussion um, on this issue at um, uh, salary and grievances. Um, I speak against the amendment. Um, to this day, it perplexes me that our mayor uh, is paying a much higher percentage, well, somewhat higher percentage uh, of his uh, health insurance premium than anybody else in the city. Um, there's an old expression from Ralph Waldo Emerson that a, a foolish consistency is the hobgoblin of little minds. Well, in this particular instance, I think it is important that our elected officials pay health insurance premiums at the rate of all other non-reps. Just because it was unfair to the mayor to increase his percentage contribution does not mean that we should be consistently unfair to all of our other elected officials. Please remember that elected officials, while there are some advantages to their position, the plain fact is, is that they put themselves in front of the governing of, of, the, of the voters and ask to be elected. That requires a fair amount of work right from the jump. Number two, money gets invested in elections if people are running in a contested race. Three, again, just because it's unfair to the mayor doesn't mean that we need to make it unfair to all of our other elected officials. Um, this is consistent as we have proposed it with um, our uh, non-rep uh, uh, employees, 12%, 15% contribution, and I think that we should keep it consistent for those reasons. Thank you for those comments. Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Mayor. I, too, will be voting against this amendment. Um, I, obviously, my name was on the document a few years back, um, but I will admit that it was a bit short-sighted. Uh, we were in different times then, but I, I don't see any reason why um, the, our elected officials should be paying more than our um, non-reps in the city. Thank you. Alderman Bourne. Thank you. I just want to remind my colleagues that this does not affect the current city attorney or the, uh, or the current city clerk. This would be for the people who choose to run for these offices the next time. Uh, and also, when, when, when Mayor Vanderstee did run for the office, he was aware of what the percentage for his contribution for health insurance was going to be. Uh, these votes, uh, unfortunately, Alder, Alderperson Donahue, these were lopsided votes the first time around, both votes, uh, the last one being 9-4 of, of you, one of which was you. So, I mean, you're just bringing this back now, unfortunately, I think, because you lost the vote a year ago. 18% uh, uh, I don't think is excessive. I think it's reality. Uh, if you look at the private sector right now, uh, most private sector employees, the latest article I've seen, and I, I forwarded it to Mr. Amodio on our HR director, an article I read last week uh, from the Kaiser Family Foundation again, the average uh, private sector employee is paying 28% for their health insurance. Uh, and I think when, back when we looked at this back in 12, 2012, I think there was some realization on the part of the council at that time that perhaps with the, budget, with the budget difficulties that we were facing, that 18% over a four-year period was not unrealistic. It's probably where we expected the rest of our employees to be after a four-year period. We're still at 12, the mayor is at, is at 18, but again, in the private sector, we're talking you know, in the high 20s. And those are, the, those are our constituents that are lucky enough to have insurance. And I don't think it's unreasonable. Again, the people that are going to run for city attorney the next time, for city clerk the next time, this is the ground rules uh, of what they're going to be running under. This is not penalizing anybody in those offices right now. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Donahue. Just a brief rejoinder. Yeah, I did vote against it last time, and I'm going to vote against it uh, this time. That is uh, hopefully not a, a foolish consistency on my part. The plain fact of the matter is, is that we should not take any solace or joy in the fact that the average nationally is that private uh, employees, people working in private industry, on average, if that is correct, are paying 28% of their health insurance premium. That's nothing to work toward. It, <laughs> we should be working in the other direction. So I, I would say that holding up the private sector, which I think all of us can agree, is not 
this is not fair to people to, to be impoverished by their health insurance premiums. So I'm not working towards making things for our city employees as bad as it is for the private sector. That's not something that I'm interested in. So the plain fact is whether people are elected now, are our current elected officials, or will be, the plain fact is, is that it is unfair to have these different amounts for <clears throat> elected officials as well as, as our non-reps. Doing it this way is, is, to me, is just a sensible way of keeping it consistent and uh, hopefully encouraging people to run for these offices. Thanks. Thank you. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Um, first of all, I'd like to co commend uh, Alderman Bourne for your passion on this issue, but um, I am not going to support it. I'm going to vote against it. Um, I think that uh, the, the issue of, of the mayor, it, it's just one position, and there's so few elected officials, it's not going to have a significant budgetary impact. Uh, while I do agree with uh, Alderman Donahue that, um, you know, that we shouldn't be... Um, looking to go the other way and, and be bringing uh, the reps and the non-reps uh, up to a, a higher level. Um, I somewhat disagree with that uh, presumption. I think that's, we need to look at that in the future. Um, to what degree, that's debatable, but uh, I think that's something that we need to look at to help reduce our costs. But I think uh, that things should be consistent, and I don't think one elected official's office or title or just elected officials in general should be singled out as a higher group or a higher category or a higher percentage of their um, health care expense. So uh, I'm going to not support it for that reason. Thank you for those comments. Any other discussion? Okay, we're voting on the amendment to make a change in the health insurance premium. All, all those in favor, uh, please press your yes button. Is this the right wording that you, ex is that the right wording? If I, if I could, Mayor, it would be, uh, the motion would be to, uh, to, make, uh, to make the health insurance contribution uh, at 18% to be consistent with the other elected official. Okay, our amendment uh, will on. be stated as such. Okay, hold on. Will the clerk please call the roll on the amendment? Six eyes, eight noes. Motion fails. Okay, we're back to the, um, uh, the, the main motion without any amendment on it. Is there any further discussion on the main motion? Seeing none, will the clerk call the roll on passage? I'm getting there. Mayor, could you clarify what an I vote is for this? Just to uh, it's to pass the ordinance and make the changes in the uh, salary and leave the um, health care rates as proposed in the original okay. document. Thank you. Yes. Eleven eyes, three noes. Motion passes. Next, we'll go on to item 7.4, General Ordinance Number 61 of 1314 by Alderman Don Donahue, Bourne, Vanderweel, Dassler, establishing the salary range for temporary and seasonal employees in the Department of Public Works. Alderman Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I would move to uh, put the ordinance on its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on this motion? Seeing none, will the clerk call the roll on passage? 14 eyes. Motion passes. Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. If I could just make a quick comment. Please do. Um, to those that are leaving the council, I'd like to thank you for your time and service. We may not have agreed on all of the issues, but the community really appreciates you stepping up and um, essentially volunteering your time. The pay isn't that great, despite what people think. Um, but we really appreciate your time and dedication that you've given to the community. So. With that said, I move to adjourn, sign die. Second. Moved and seconded to adjourn, sign die. Can the clerk call the roll?
11 ayes, two noes, and one abstain. Motion <laughs> passes. <laughs> we stand adjourned. The last one. Huh? I don't know, boys, <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't want to do that.